What's your competitive advantage? Seven strategies for running a more profitable business in a complex world. Cliff Bowman and Paul Raspin, strategizing for the future. The business world is bafflingly complex. Leaders tackle the complicated interaction of evolving variables every day. And businesses themselves are complex systems. These levels of complexity make it impossible to predict what the years ahead may hold, so managing companies and planning for the future is a difficult challenge. Every business has its own particular history, which shapes how it looks today. What works in one firm may well not be effective in another. Complexity may render highly detailed long-term business strategizing pointless, but some broad brush strategizing is possible. You can select among seven competitive strategies, each using specific capabilities to create value for customers. These strategies, whose names form the acronym SALIENT are Specialization, Adaptive, Low-Cost, Innovation, Excellence, No Frills, and Targeting. Each strategy realistically acknowledges the emergent nature of change and defines the company's direction. They are not precise blueprints for the future, but they provide guidance about how to best position your operations for the years to come. The Seven Competitive Strategies The Seven Competitive Strategies acknowledge the unknowability of the changes businesses face now and in the future. Each strategy can provide a competitive advantage if handled adroitly, but a strategy's degree of effectiveness in improving corporate performance depends on the firm's leaders receiving and heeding quality feedback. These seven strategies also center a company's need to create profit by helping firms compete and deliver value in the most cost-efficient way. Each strategy covers a different way a firm can compete. Each one can increase a company's capabilities and the usefulness, benefit, or satisfaction that customers receive from its products or services. Strategies must evolve into actions. Strategies lead to profits when companies transform them into action. This transformation happens in four stages. One. Target existing capabilities. The company must launch or strengthen its capabilities in sourcing, operations, and selling. Two, pinpoint enabling practices. Look for processes that will enhance the structure, systems, and culture of your company. Three, develop specific initiatives. Enhance the firm's capabilities with practices that become integral to its operations. Four, evolve from initiatives into actions. Draw on high-quality feedback that lets the company evaluate the effectiveness of its strategy and its actions. Which strategy? Identifying the best strategy is a critical decision. Your choice must deliver competitive advantage and guide your firm's future. Consider your target customers, who they are, what they want, and which offerings will serve them best. Orient your activities to meet their important needs. Examine the operational changes necessary for each strategy and weigh each strategy's overall feasibility. Think of your introduction period in three stages that apply to all seven strategies. Choosing a strategy is phase one, the cognition phase. Then comes phase two, the development phase. When you evaluate various initiatives, this requires quality feedback. Phase three, the embedded phase, involves the changes you implement through initiatives that will become business as usual. The choice of strategy indicates what capabilities we need to develop and what structures, systems, and culture would enable these capabilities to thrive. As you consider which strategy to use, bear in mind the general principle for strategic planning. Companies should restrict themselves to a single strategy at any one time. Under certain circumstances, however, firms can pursue two strategies simultaneously. For example, in a large corporation with multiple strategic business units, SBUs, it's feasible for each SBU to pursue a different business strategy at the same time. In detail, the seven basic competitive strategies are Specialization Firms that specialize focus on a solitary product or a unified group of products. They make sure their products outperform their competitors' goods. The specialization strategy requires looking for demand segments of your audience that will value your offering strongly. Commercial growth depends on constant expansion into new markets. Managers have agency. They are able to affect what happens in the system, but they cannot determine the outcome of their actions. Adaptive. Adaptive firms are agile. They excel at transforming themselves to meet their customers' wants and needs. These firms' leaders must be able to establish customer preferences in a dynamic marketplace. A difficult challenge. To succeed with an adaptive strategy, Firms must be able to detect market changes at the earliest possible moment. Once they know a change is coming, these companies must be flexible enough to transform themselves to take advantage of new market realities and opportunities. 
The strategy process moves from a broad intention through to more specific initiatives and then to actions that start to shift the system. Low cost. Low cost firms manufacture and market products that are every bit as good as their competitors' products, but cost consumers less. Firms that rely on low cost as a strategy do well when they are in markets characterized by long life cycle products and when their customers don't want change. To make a low cost strategy economically viable, research and understand what your customers really value in your offerings. Armed with this knowledge, low cost firms eliminate superfluous expenditures. It is feasible for any business to pursue any strategy. The degree of system change may though be more a change of emphasis rather than a large-scale change. Innovation. In markets where customer needs seldom change, innovative firms can do well when they provide products that meet clients' predictable requirements in inventive ways. When they do, their customers will pay top dollar. Innovation normally requires extensive R&D, major technological breakthroughs, and significant production expenses. In short, the upfront costs of innovation can be enormous. However, Innovative products that break new ground can quickly become highly profitable bestsellers. One size does not fit all, and the way the future emerges is dependent on the events and patterns of relationships and particular features of the local situation. Excellence. Strategically excellent companies constantly try to improve their products. Their competitive advantage is that other companies can't easily duplicate their advances and improvements. To attain distinction on this level, firms must develop exacting quality criteria and then base all their manufacturing activities on those high standards. The choice of strategy should drive the future evolution of the business. No frills. No frills products aren't necessarily low in cost. Companies competing on this playing field offer their customers simple, unadorned products free of options. No frills firms deliver the basic requirements at a competitive price. To make this strategy work, Firms may end up changing their customer profiles, their product lines, and their manufacturing processes. Aldi, a grocery retailer, is the model of a successful no-frills firm. Aldi focuses on developing comprehensive market research data on the exact food products and price points its customers want. To meet its profit margins with a low-frills, low-prices strategy, Aldi strives to eliminate excess costs in its supply chains. Targeting. Firms that target concentrate on a specific market segment. They tightly focus on selected customers and products that perfectly match their specific needs. Targeting makes good business sense when the market subdivides into segments of demand and each segment has separate needs and preferences. By meeting the desires of its buyer segments, a targeting company can find opportunities to charge premium prices. Strategy Sequencing Companies often move through a series of strategies as they establish and develop themselves. For example, many startups depend on an innovation strategy in their early phase of operations and then evolve. Responding to new opportunities in the marketplace, some startups initially rely on an adaptive strategy. As demand grows for the new firm's products or services, it may switch to an excellence or low-cost strategy. And as innovative competitors challenge well-established firms, a no-frills strategy a low-cost strategy or some other tactical approach may become more relevant and appropriate. Strategizing and management. Executives may try to impose their own management concepts on employees to improve their firm's competitive posture. Unfortunately, these leaders often have things backwards. Many mistakenly think of their companies as machines with levers. Pull a lever and get a preferred outcome. However, too many external factors, including suppliers, customers, and competitors, beyond an executive's control can affect a company's results. Many of the prescriptions offered to managers are based on inappropriate assumptions about the way the world works. Before leaders settle on a strategy, they must analyze their firm's current competitive situation and plan their managerial actions accordingly. This sensible suggestion isn't a new idea. Your customers will determine how well you do in the marketplace. Companies must first pay attention to what their customers want and need and then evolve a competitive strategy to fulfill their preferences. Takeaways. Today's complexity may make it impossible for executives to predict with any certainty what the years ahead may hold for their firms. Relying on a continual stream of information, executives can select from seven salient competitive strategies and convert them to action. They are specialization, a firm focuses on and perfects a sole product or product group. Adaptive, a firm responds to shifting customer buying preferences. Low cost, 
a firm maintains product quality at a lower cost. Innovation. A firm competes by offering exciting new product features. Excellence. A firm competes by making product improvements. No frills. A firm competes by providing simple, bare-bones products. Targeting. A firm focuses on a singular segment of the marketplace. When you try a new initiative, gather high-quality feedback and use it as evidence for deciding whether to expand, adjust, or drop the initiative. Did you know that around 70% of our viewers haven't subscribed to our channel yet? If you're one of them, why not consider hitting that subscribe button? It's a great way to stay up to date with our latest videos and support our channel at the same time. Join the majority of our community and subscribe today. Thanks for watching.